Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Hello, PR Maven Nation. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast. This is episode 164, presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the Marshall Plan 65-step strategic process. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm your host, Nancy Marshall, the PR maven, CEO of Marshall Communications, and I want to welcome you. And I also want to welcome my guest, Dana Bullen, who's president at Sunday River. Welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thanks for uh, inviting me to do this with you. It's really fun. I'm happy to have you here. And um, Dana has had more than 30 years of ski industry and management experience. And I'm kind of smiling because uh, we go way back in the ski business. We, we do. You, <laughs> you were there the first day I showed up to work at Sherlock. So you remember that? I, I do. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I can't say I remember that day, but I'm glad that I was there. So Dana began serving in his current role as resort president of Sunday River in September of 2004. And prior to his promotion, he worked as vice president of partnership marketing for American Skiing Company, where he oversaw corporate partnership programs for the company's entire network of resorts. He worked his way up the ski business ladder shortly after earning a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Maine at Farmington in 1988. And he held various positions at Sugarloaf as well. I remember when he was running the rental shop at Sugarloaf. And, uh, you know, from there, it was all, all up, upwards at Sugarloaf and then on to Sunday River. And in 2017, he was inducted into the Maine Sports Hall of Fame. A native of Farmington, Maine, Dana enjoys skiing, fishing, hunting, and the great Maine outdoors. And he has a place on West Runset Lake, which actually is in Madison, Madison yes. <laughs> even though sometimes people say Skowhegan, but I know it's Madison. You so. do. Yeah. Yeah. Very special place. <laughs> very special place. Yeah. It's a lot of years, Nancy, that I've known you. You I, still you still have the same presence you did back then. Oh, Dina, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. Now I'm blushing. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, we've had a good run and... Um, Boy, that training that we had at Sugarloaf, you know, in hospitality, customer service, leadership was really powerful. You know, it's interesting. I've I, I've had a lot of great leaders since Warren, um, Warren Cook. Uh, Mr. Kircher has been incredible to work for. The owner of Boyne for the last 14 years. I'm currently working with somebody I've worked with for seven years and Brad Keene. And, and I've had a lot of folks in between but I still go back to this day. And, and if I have a tough decision to make, what would Warren do still comes up in my head. That, that man was an incredible leader. Well, you know, he had been a coach prior to going into business management. And I think coaching has always been his primary love. And he looked at us as a team and he really did know how to put together a team of people who depended on each other and we respected each other and we loved working as a team. And and, and I think that's the key word, right? Respect. Um, he, he made sure that we all knew that he cared about us. And it was our role and responsibility to make sure we all cared about each other. And anything less than that wasn't tolerated. And, and that created this sense of community that I still look back on fondly today. And you know, my career has been an attempt to do that uh, at, at Sugarloaf and American Skiing Company when it's there, but for the last 17 years, right at Sunday River. And 
and that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to think about how to, how to help other folks. Yeah. So tell us about the trajectory of your career. You were <laughs> Running the rental shop at Sugarloaf, and then from where, where did you go? Well, you know, I, I, I think that, I think when I started there, I hadn't been there two weeks, and, and I saw Warren Cook and a couple of other executives come in to, to the rental shop at Sugarloaf, and I said, you know, that's what I want to do someday. I, I was going to be a teacher. I, I was going to be a teacher, and I probably used the education as a teacher in my current role, but I knew from the first week that I wanted to be president of a ski resort, and found out really quickly from folks that the easiest way to do that was make sure to do your job, make sure to do everything else you could to make yourself visible and be willing to do anything. I bet you remember when I dressed up as Santa and walked Warren Cook's donkey around and, <laughs> you know, those many nights we stood out in the cold loading skis onto buses, all of those things made me visible to the people and showed them that I was dedicated and loyal and that I wanted to be part of it and uh, became clear that if you did a lot of jobs, so I had a bunch of different jobs from a golf pro to a ski shop to marketing to partnership marketing, um, all the while it was enjoying the people I worked with and, and it's everybody around me who has allowed me to do what I do today. Well, I think that you really, um, you were ambitious. And I remember when you said you were going to be the president of the resort someday. And I have to say, I think a lot of people thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> And I admire I, you because I mean, I'm ambitious too. And I made my own way, but you, you set, set a goal and you've achieved that. I did. I, it was funny because the day that I was given the job by BJ Fair at Sunday River, um, he said, we'd like to make you the president at Sunday River. And I had this shocked look on my face and he said, is that okay? <laughs> and I said, I've kind of worked for this my whole life, except that I thought I was going to get to be president of Sugarloaf, not Sunday River. <laughs> um, BJ knew. Sunday River was the right brand, the right place for me, and he created an environment that I could thrive in. And so putting me down there, it's just just been an incredible career. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Sunday River brand because Sunday River has a very powerful brand. And yeah. uh, tell us how you've worked to build that brand. You know, when I arrived, Les had been gone a couple of years. Les Otten built that resort from 50,000 skier visits to 550,000 skier visits. So if you'd asked me what the brand was prior to Les leaving, it was Les. Les was the entire brand. His personal brand was exactly the brand of the resort. So that we were a little bit lost then. What we've never been lost about was it was about the snow, right? It all in the ski industry starts with the snow. And I remember Les saying, it's about the snow, stupid, right? Any question you had, just remember it was about the snow, stupid. And I think as the industry evolved, we figured out very, very quickly that expectations of guests are different than that. It's about the snow and the food. It's about the snow and the way you treat my children. It's about the snow and guest services. And, and so all of those pieces and all of the different places that people touch us, starting with the website, make us who we are and they all need to add up to something positive. Just the snow alone doesn't cut it anymore, but it all comes back to the snow at the end of the day. That's first and foremost who Sunday River is. That's right. And you have the tagline of your happy place, right? Or my happy place. Yeah. A little different, Nancy, with the happy place, because what we're trying to communicate there is Sunday River can be so many different things to so many different people. Right. We've gone through iterations in our lives, right? I've, I've watched our children grow up. And so kids programs at one stage in our lives were very, very important to us. Right. And then it became the race programs and how they were going to get into college and ski race. And, right. and we watched our kids move up through. So, so our happy place when the kids were three years old is very different than it was when they were in college. And, and now different as they're young adults and come back and ski with both of us. So. That's right. Yeah. I should say that Dana's kids and my kids are in the same age group and the same friend group. And it's really great to see them as adults uh, to be friends together now. Isn't the ski industry a wonderful thing at connecting people and connecting those kids? And as they go to Salt Lake, they have this built in group of friends that they still ski with and always have somebody to be with that is either ski raced with them or been part of the resorts with them. Yeah. I mean, 
or anywhere around the world, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I, even though our kids grew up in kind of remote towns in Maine also, um, you know, they were pretty worldly kids. Yeah. <laughs> the, the world got big for them. The yeah. world got big for them because of skiing and going to Europe and racing and doing those other things. But just skiing in general provides those wonderful outdoor opportunities to learn together. Yeah. No, it's been great. It's been great for our family's lives and, and uh, it'll always be a big part of my life. Yeah, absolutely. So marketing is a huge, has, plays a huge role in the ski business, obviously. How do you, how do you look at marketing and is it a, a department at Sunday River or is marketing everywhere? Or? Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting The the, who really oversees or runs Sunday River is, is a group of eight professionals. And one of those professionals is a marketing person. Her, her name's Shelly and she just took over recently for Nick Lambert, who was promoted to the chief marketing officer of All Boyne. And I could have sat here 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago with you, Nancy, and talked to you about marketing and all the wonderful promotions and, and how we got exposure and how we sent out snow reports and why wow, it's changed so much. And, and, and I've tried to keep up with it, but the world today of how we communicate with our guests, how we get them their information has changed dramatically. Um, you, you know, your specialty, you, you have made a life out of being an expert with social media and brands. And that kind of has escaped me. I, I'm not a Facebook person or an Instagram person, but boy, we have three people on the team at Sunday River who are, and we communicate to guests that way. Way. on top of communicating with them, we know a lot more about them than we used to. So we don't randomly fire things out there. We're very specific with the approach to it. But it's something very different than when I was in marketing with you all those years ago. That's right. Well, I can think back to being in the conference room at Sugarloaf with Chip Carey and he had a big whiteboard. He would make circles of all the geographic target audiences and you know, we would try to segment the off audience, but it was not nearly as segmented as it is now. You're, you're exactly right. And we, we know now very specifically where folks are from, and we know a lot more about them and what they're looking for from us. So we're much clearly, we can deliver to them the things they expect. We have a housing development called The Glades. It's just gorgeous, ski in, ski out lots. And those folks are all within 10 miles of each other um, down in the Marblehead area. And, and then they kind of came up there as a group. Most of them didn't know each other at that point, but you can see how effectively having that information, knowing where those folks are and what they like to do to recreate, it works. Yeah. Well, you know, when people buy a condominium at a resort like Sugarloaf or Sunday River, they make a big commitment. Yeah. It's a big commitment, not only financially, but also in time and, and almost like what I'd call heart share. Like you own a share of their heart. It kind of becomes part of their persona, which resort they ski at. And they're part of a community, right? They're right. part of what we do. And so I didn't do real estate for a long time. My role recently changed. We've got a general manager who's come in to run the day-to-day -day operation. Brian is a true operational expert. That's allowed me to focus on real estate a little more. When I entered into real estate, and I've got a gentleman that helps me, um, he, he leads the real estate efforts at Sunday River, he looks at it like we, we just sold a lot for more than a million dollars. And that's a really cool thing. But what I see with that is a family, a generational family, not only the, the, the folks that are there with their kids, but the grandparents that are there with them as well. And then over the course of the next 50 years, that's going to be the next generation. So for us, it's just this this nonstop, you know, it feeds our season's passes and our kids' programs. And, and our job is just to make sure we're getting them what they need through those changes. Yeah. Well, as you're talking about that, of course, another special part of our relationship is like, I know your parents, yeah. you know, Oma. Yeah. Cody Bowen's <laughs> favorite person in the whole world is Oma. So, that's my yeah, mom. Yeah. yeah that's so funny. sweet lady. I always saw her waiting for the kids and you, you talk about commitment, right? And that's what, that's why these kids all love each other is because of people like your mother connecting them. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really a very special bond. And that ties into my next question, which is about a personal brand. 
And I, I know that you're a humble Mainer and you don't think that you have a strong personal brand. I personally think you have a very strong personal brand and it has to do with your undying commitment to customer service and your work ethic, which is unbelievable. I mean, here it is like Thanksgiving Eve today and you're, you're here in Portland with me and your family's at home and you're still working. So how would you, or are you even conscious of your personal brand and how would you describe that? Well, thank you. First of all, that's very kind of you. Second of all, I'm going to guess that if 20 years ago you were asked to describe my personal brand, we may have used some different adjectives, right? So, so I like to think that our brand evolves over time. Thank God yes, our brand does. evolves over time. Um, I don't know that I think of my personal brand as much as I think of our team. And honestly, what's most important to me right now, uh, you heard me talk about Warren Cook. I'm hoping, I'm hoping in some small way when I retire that my team feels that I help them along the way. I used to get really motivated by, well, oh, great. So I'm running the rental shop. Now I'm running the retail shop. Now I get to be a golf pro. Oh, isn't it cool? Cause I'm going to go to work for corporate and all of, the, and I watched that personal growth and it took all that to put my kids through college and to grow in the company. But today what excites me the most is watching other people grow to, to watch people grow beyond what they know currently they can to help them along that path. There have been a number of people, Kathy Witherspoon, Nick Lambert, who have gone from Sunday River and who have grown beyond me. That's really, really special, right? That, that people people have, have gone beyond what they thought they may be able to do. And we've got two of the leaders in Boyne that have come from Sunday River. It's impressive to watch all those folks. And that's what motivates me today. And if that's part of my brand, I guess you could, that, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, I think also your brand is your network and you've got a pretty wide spread network of people, um, you know, again, not only employees, but your guests and your peers and vendors and partners. And I know when you did partnership marketing, you were really effective at that. Well, I guess it would start with a couple of people at Sugarloaf um, and two very different people. One was Peter Weber um, and the other was Jack Flanagan, God rest his soul. Um, both of those gentlemen in very different ways had a monstrous network of folks that they could call on for anything. So early on in my career, I tried to emulate what they were doing to build these relationships. And the one piece of it that stands out the most to me is loyalty. Um, I dropped off a bottle of wine for you today. It's from Michael Honig's Vineyard, right? I've been partners with Michael Honig for 17 years. I, I can't imagine ever doing anything else. I work with L.L. Bean and the folks at L.L. Bean and being loyal to them and their brand and their companies, but then also the loyalty to individuals, uh, making sure that the people at work at Sunday River know that we care about them, that their safety is our first priority, but then their growth and whatever that growth they determine for themselves, um, we're loyal to making all those things happen. So at the end of the day, I guess if loyalty becomes part of that personal brand, then I'd be really proud of that. Yeah, well, I think it's loyalty and trustworthiness. I mean, people to do business with you, first they have to know you, then they have to like you, and then they have to trust you. Yeah. And I think that the trust and the loyalty is, is, you know, taking that personal brand to the farthest degree. Yeah, that's a really good point, Nancy. You look at Sunday River's 550,000 skier visits and then our other couple hundred thousand visits from conferences and everything else. I can't touch all those people, right? So we need we need Sunday River to have that sense of trust that, that they know as a company that no matter where they go throughout the resort, they can trust us to do our best to deliver what they want. So my role is to establish a team that, that makes that happen. And, and the nine folks I talked about earlier that, that really oversee that resort, the vice presidents, at the res that's what they do on a daily basis is right. make sure that we're taking care of folks and they can trust in the Sunday River brand. Well, and that brings us back to Les Sutton and the snow surface. Yeah. And, you know, people want to be able to trust that the snow report that they hear in Marblehead, Mass, you know, yeah. before they drive up 
is going to be what's what the resort's going to deliver. And I think that Sunday River has a very good reputation when it comes to trustworthiness. Well, I appreciate that. You, you look at snowmaking and less built us a system, right? And then after less built us a system and he retired from the industry, um, Mr. Kircher came in from Boyne and, and Stephen Kircher grew up at a dinner table learning about the ski industry. His father ran ski resorts as a child. One of the things that the Kircher family is passionate about is snowmaking. So we've taken that that existing structure that, that Les left us, and we've continued to build on that. We've continued to stay out in front of everybody. But that's one half of the equation because there are other ski resorts that have the ability to make snow like we do from a physical stand, physical plant standpoint. The other half of the equation is the people that do it. And these guys and girls that make snow are so proud of what they do. And that pride puts them ahead of the rest of the Northeast. And so they take the physical plant and they make it do more than we even know it can do. And and that's part of the brand and what makes Sunday River special. Yeah, well, I was at Sunday River over Easter weekend um, and I I got separated from my kids somehow. They probably were going a lot faster than I was. Anyway, I ended up at at one of the lodges and I ended up talking to a bunch of the snowmaking guys and they were very friendly. (laughs) And I was joking about how I had just gotten ditched by my my son and his girlfriend, who are both former D- D1 ski racers, who yeah, left it, me in the dust. And these guys are heroes, right? Yeah. They're, they're everybody's heroes. And, and they, they were know very it. friendly with me, too. Yeah, and everything we can do to get them that exposure, to make sure everybody knows. People cheer for them from the lifts. And you want to talk about it. You're out there and you work really hard. But when people appreciate what you do, that's so motivational for everybody. Oh, yeah. So hug a snowmaker, folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> We're going to hear more with, from Dana in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you about um, my book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand. And you can get a free copy if you go to prmaven.com slash giveaway. And we'll be back with more from Dana Bullen in just a moment. Hi, I'm Julene Gervais, host of the television program, Greenlight Maine. Nancy Marshall's book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, helped our team tremendously develop a loyal following, and it helped us expand with two television programs called the Greenlight Maine College Edition and Elevating Voices. Plus, we've picked up three Emmy nominations. I highly recommend you read Nancy's book to grow your brand. Well, thanks to Julene Gervais for that. And her son, Jack, is here with a, uh, assisting with our AV today. So thanks, Jack. <laughs> he's a student at, at Greeley High School, and he's helping us out. So welcome back to the PR Maven podcast. We're talking with Dana Bullen today. And um, we're also available on Facebook on YouTube. And that's sort of a new development that we're very excited about. So we're sharing the PR Maven podcast as, on as many channels as we can. So Dana, Sunday River, we were just talking about the snowmaking. How do you promote that and what makes Sunday River's snowmaking different? Yeah, I I think the first promoted is an interesting word because I've I've spent my whole life promoting, right? That's, I I like doing that type of thing. And and whether that was a bar promotion when I first started or something really cool that we're doing online now, just getting ourselves out there is great. But the other piece of promoting is it doesn't do any good to tell everybody we've got the greatest snowmaking system in the world if we don't back it up. And I think that's what we are so exceptional at. And today with our general manager, he was completely focused on making sure that we're making snow that was ready for Thanksgiving weekend, that we were going to have the best snow in the Northeast. And we try and focus all winter long on delivering on that brand promise of we're going to have the best snow in the Northeast and we're good at it. And we keep right after it. I'm glad you brought up the word brand promise because yeah, that is the the essence of a brand is a promise and gets back to that trustworthiness that we were talking about. People can trust you're going to deliver on the brand that they're expecting. Yeah. And and every ski resort has its own brand. I was at Sugarloaf for 15 years before I'd I'd been at Sunday River for the last 17 years and they're different brands. Um, But both of them do a great job at delivering upon the expectations of those brands. And Carl 
like Sugarloaf is great about protecting that brand and his team does that. And the team at Sunday River is, is just wonderful at making sure we're protecting ours. That's right. And I would like to think that the main brand plays into that also, since uh, my agency is involved with pro promoting main tourism. Yeah, it and, sure does. Yeah. So I think that both Sugarloaf and Sunday River benefit to some extent from being part of the brand that's that's called Maine because uh, people come to Maine expecting a certain sense of authenticity. In honesty, right? Right. In yeah. honesty. If we tell you it snowed six inches, it better have snowed six <laughs> inches. You know, this, people, people expect us to be authentic. They expect us to be friendly. And uh, that separates us from the rest of New England in skiing. And we've got a new sister resort now in Shawnee Peak as well, which is very exciting. So now we have Sugarloaf, Sunday River, and Shawnee Peak as part of the main skiing brand. Yeah, and I was telling you, I'm very excited because uh, my son Jamie and his girlfriend Emily and I are going to be going night skiing at Shawnee. We got season passes for night skiing. That's awesome. So we're going to be heading up there after work several nights a week. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you there someday. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, you've worked in the business for a long time and you talked about training and mentoring others. How do you train and mentor others so they carry out the vision that you've had for the resort? So I, I think part of it is establishing a common vision, not, not just my vision. Right. Um, my vision is what we all agree to. So Mr. Kircher, um, through an envisioning process when Boyne took over, involved the community, involved some of our key stakeholders, guests, uh, folks that are property owners there, and he also involved team members, and we established what the vision was. So unlike Sunday River of 30 years ago, this isn't about one person's vision. This is a collective vision. And then once that vision's established, it's my job to be relentless with the team to make sure that every decision we make supports and makes that work. Um, each individual needs different um, types of help or service from me. My, my job is to make sure I help grow everybody and, and individual folks need different things. Uh, but I tr truly look at it like it's my responsibility to help them get the tools they need to get their team's jobs done. Um, and, and that's what I work on. Well, I'm sure they know that you care as, as much as you do. And I also think that Dana, you have a real, you're very good at listening. I mean, you, you're not as much of a talker as a listener. And I, I like that about you because <laughs> I'm a talker. <laughs> No, joking you, 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 you and my wife would compete for that when you're together. <laughs> uh, you two, you two are just constantly laughing. I, um, but I think part of that I've learned from my wife, right? That that to to listen to folks, to understand what they need, and then try to help them with it is important. I mean, you you look back on thirty. 30 plus years in the ski industry, it's afforded me a place to raise a family, a beautiful wife and great kids. And, and so if in, in some way I can make sure that other people have that same opportunity, that's my job from now until the day I retire. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of families, uh, well, obviously families at Sugarloaf, but also Sunday River families that Again, they just love going there and, um, you know, it, it's a point of pride to be part of that community. And, and es essentially the community is the brand and the brand is the community. Yeah, they kind of make the brand, right? And, yeah. and the brands are a little different. Um, Sugarloaf is different than Sunday River and neither one of them is good, bad, or it's like colleges in Maine, right? right? Wow, you don't have to pick the best one because we've got just incredible colleges right. in Maine. Well, now we have three wonderful ski resorts in Maine. Each has its own unique and different personality. I can tell you if I'm going to go night skiing where I'm going to go, oh, yeah. I'm going to go to Shawnee Peak, right? And and so there's different there's different components that work differently at, at each individual ski resorts. But when our guests grab that and take ownership of making sure that, that we are doing what they need us to do as a company, then you know you've been successful that's right we should give a shout out to to saddleback which is making a great yeah. comeback and of course lost valley where i was on the ski school way back before i started working at sugarloaf so both those places it just wonderful having andy at saddleback and leading the, the helm um there it was a godsend for them andy's been in the industry a long long time and and lost valley talk about a place that just gets so many folks introduced to skiing 
Um, That's they, right. They do a great job. And of course, do you remember when the Julie, Julie and Anna Friesian were do. sponsored by Sugarloaf? And I was managing their headgear sponsorship. And yeah. I remember that that was just uh, so exciting for me. Do you remember how I, <laughs> I got kicked off of Waterville Valley? Uh, Julie Friesian won a World Cup ski race. Uh, I, I think it was in the early 90s. Anyway, yeah. So Sugarloaf was sponsoring her and I was there for the press conference and I was so excited that I took the Sugarloaf banner and I covered the Waterville oh, Valley no. banner. <laughs> that that was really immature yeah. of me. I should not have done it, but <laughs> they they had security remove me from the from the resort and I was told I was never welcome back. Well, Nancy, I'm I, I'm hoping we're going to stop with the old stories right there. <laughs> neither neither one of us needs to delve into the things that could get get me in trouble from 25 years ago. No, we'll so, stop with that. Yeah, no, that's that's you broke their brand promise. Let's leave it at that. I was, well, I have been back to Waterloo Valley, and I did tell the current general manager that I had been asked never to come back, and he told me that it was okay that they. They have since forgiven me, but I know there are certain people. Yeah. Katie Dillman, who was then the director of communications, she will never forget that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Katie. I, <laughs> I didn't mean I was just so excited I couldn't contain my enthusiasm. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I know Peter Weber was there and he was laughing hysterically. He thought it was so funny. <laughs> so Dana, is there a book, an app, or a website that has impacted you professionally and personally, and how? Well, I, I think the one that I've tried to live by for the last 15 years is The Servant by Jim Hunter. Oh, yeah. um, it, it, it really changed how I looked at my role and my responsibility back then. Um, today, uh, as I look and think that I've, I've accomplished some of the things with the servant and I continue to get better at it. Um, Simon Sinek, I, I, I love listening to his podcast, but the infinite game is an incredible book. And, and that, and listening to about what our role and responsibility is in life is really cool. Yeah. Well, Simon Sinek start with why is, is like a Bible. Mm, I think. So yeah, absolutely. Why are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Dana, I feel like we could go on forever, but it is the day before Thanksgiving, so I think you need to get home and help Heidi get ready. <laughs> I, I will do that. I will definitely do that. I'm so, blessed that she's there. So. Yeah, I was going to say, Heidi Bullen is probably one of the best elementary school teachers of all time, and uh, I follow her on uh, all the things that she's doing in Bethel. What's the name of the school that she's at? She's at Crescent Park, and she's very, very proud of the Eddie and the Betty book. And she's just done another book that you helped with, Lisa Wenzel, as well. That's right. Yeah, we're going to be out promoting that. And probably we're going to have to have Lisa and maybe we'll have Heidi and Claudia awesome. on to talk about that book. Awesome. About Scotty, Super Scotty Wenzel. I'm very proud of him. Yeah, he's an awesome kid. I really enjoyed our time together. Thank you. Me too, Dana. I enjoyed it too. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, What's the best way? Dballen at sundayriver.com or, you know, shoot me a note. Let me know you want to ski someday this winter. All right. Yeah. And he'll, he'll follow, he'll follow up on that brand promise. So it's dballen at sundayriver.com. And you're on LinkedIn too, I would imagine. I am. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dana. This is really awesome. And if you have any questions for our guest, or if you'd like to hear about a certain topic for me, feel free to email me at nancy at prmaven.com. And thanks for joining and we'll see you the next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.